Hey guys, Scott Reekers here with Eastman's Hunting Journals, and I am here today to review the full curl rifle in 6.5 PRC from Inrut Rifles. Whack. Yep. <laughs> that thing's dialed. Hey guys, welcome to Eastman's Hunting Journal's YouTube channel, and I am here with the brains behind Inrut Rifles, and I'm just going to turn it over. Mark, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about the company? And then he's also got Chris next to him. And, you know, I'd like to have you guys do an introduction and share a little bit about yourselves. Yeah, sure. My name's Mark Lemke. I'm the owner of Inrut Rifles. Uh, we've been doing it for around four years now, I'm guessing. Um, I've owned it for two. Um, Chris Ham is my best friend right here. He's a hunter. We hunt a lot together. He's a pro staff hunter. He's uh, bought a number of them and he shot a number of them with me. We shoot all the time, so. So tell me a little bit about in rut rifles, the, the history and, you know, what, what drove you to start building these, these rifles, these high quality rifles? It started back way back when, it, it's probably been, God, I bet 20 years ago or more. At that time I met Chris a long, a long time ago and he was an avid hunter and Anyway, so I decided to do uh, um, advertising and marketing, and I did a lot of companies. I did some videos for Hornady, some advertisement for them. Carl's Ice Optics, I did them for eight years. Um, HS Precision, I did them for around, I think, nine years. When I got really into the accuracy part of it was when I was working with HS Precision. So, and I really did like the accuracy, and I was just amazed as how accurate a gun can be. And I always wanted to own my own company and have my own product. And so I decided to go try after raising two boys. My wife's a physician here in Rapid. And after that, I decided to get back into something I really like and I love and I'm an avid shooter and a reloader. And I've been doing it forever. And I just like accurate rifles, that's period. I like it when they all touch or same hole. So, you know, our, our, our motto is three into one hole, but you know, we try to. Most, some of them, a lot of them do it, but as long as they're all touching, though. <laughs> and when I first met Mark, they said we've been good friends for 20 years. So we did a lot of hunting together, and back then we were shooting factory, you know, factory rifles. And you know, you can get them shooting good. You do some reloading, you can get them shooting pretty good. Like you said, when he went to work with HS, we saw what custom guns can really do and shoot like, and. That really impressed me and you is because we like, you know, everybody likes to go out and shoot steel, shoot targets and, you know, get groups that are super tight. And then that rolls over to your hunting too, where you can reach out a little farther and make shots on things that, you know, that yeah. maybe other things can't. So I'm a hunter and I like shooting guns and I like accurate guns and these things do the trick. I've got two of them and they are absolute tack drivers. So first thing I want to highlight is this defiance action. Now, to me, what stands out is there is no slop in this action at all because they harden the metal before, before they actually start doing all the milling. And so what that does is that gives you an action that is tight. That means there's not gonna be any wobble inside there. The bullet's not gonna move as you, as you fire it. I'm a real practical guy. I'm a layman. Um, I know about 80% of you are like, you know, what advantage do I have in moving up to a rifle like this? Well, that's one of the advantages is that when you get into a defiance action like this, it has the hardened steel and that gets rid of all the little tiny gaps that are minute little details that are the difference between something that comes say off a factory line. That's why one of the reasons you'd want to move up to a rifle like this from Inrut Rifles. There we go. Banging steel at 550. That's how easy this is. And most of our guns we shoot are mostly with factory ammo that yeah. are, you know. The LDX shoots phenomenal out of, I haven't seen one gun of his that it doesn't shoot, just lights off. Yeah. So that's really something. I've used the ELDX and the Precision Hunter. It's amazing how far those factory loads have come. Or if they do, if they want to do all that stuff and be super technical, you can order these barrels with whatever twist you want, so you go heavier bullets, you can do whatever you want. So yeah. he's really um, got it figured out so he can kind of help both people, whoever's wanting to do the reloading technical stuff or just buy factory ammo that shoots under half inch groups all day. Yeah. Okay, so you said it, so I, 
I know this, but I want our audience to hear it. Help our audience understand the correlation between twist rate and bullet weight and why you'd buy what. If they just want to shoot the 143 ELDX, let's say, you know, um, I know that a one and eight twist in a six five will shoot that fine. It shoots really well. But if you want to go up to bump it up to the new 156 Burger VLD Hunter that's out there, um, you're going to have to have a one and seven and a half. Yeah, you're a little twist. faster twist for that heavier. Heavier bullet. bullets go lower twist. Right. And that's exactly what I did with my 6.5 PRC because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to reload the heavier grain bullet. And then you get on the burger website and they say these will stabilize in this twist of a barrel. So when I say, hey, Mark, I want to do this gun. Can we get this in a seven and a half? Yeah, I can do it in seven and a half, yeah. eight, eight and a half, whatever you want. 75% of the people that buy guns from us don't reload. You know, they're just average guys that, are, that work for a living and they make enough money and they like shooting. And, and so we try to make them happy with everything. So, so far, it's, we're doing okay. So. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cool. I, I like, I like hearing that explanation because relating it to relating it to the average Joe, I think is what is really easy when you get into precision shooting, especially with a lot of guys that have a lot of knowledge. It's very easy to shrink away from those conversations, but hearing it put in layman's terms rather than kind of jump into the fire like that is really cool. So next thing is this is the full curl model. But you will notice on this, we have the carbon fiber barrel. And I just absolutely love this. The proof barrel, the proof carbon barrel. So this is something that they've done a lot of experimenting on. They know that people want carbon barrels. I'm a lightweight backpack hunter and I love getting as light as possible. I would have no issues whatsoever taking this rifle with me on a backpack hunt because its weight is just that light because of a combination of the carbon barrel the stock that Inrut rifle itself actually produces and makes. And you can see they, you know, you've got this cool pattern on there. Every one of these patterns is unique and that will fit your personality. You can get what you want on this. Obviously Mark sent it to us with this, this orange and gray. Are you seeing a lot of people wanting lighter rifles, especially with the popularity of backcountry hunting? There's a lot of guys, a lot of sheep hunters, a lot of goat hunters. I mean, I'm getting older too. So it starts wearing on you a little bit. It's like, I'm gonna go to a lighter gun that I can, you know, carry and not have the weight, you know, so do that type and stuff. And we do a 24 inch barrel. I mean, we will do a full curl and a 26 if they really want to. So, you know, the length ways, we can go all the way up to a 28, but. And you don't need it for the accuracy. You can shoot the 24s, yeah. 20, I mean, if you wanna go down yeah. on that, you can shoot you the lose a little, You only lose a little bit of feet per second with the per inch, so. As far as accuracy, it's not, and you know, and the deer ain't gonna sit there and go, oh, geez, I just got hit with <laughs> 2,800 feet <laughs> instead, <of> <laughs> instead of 3,000. The, the way some guys talk on forums, you would think that the deer actually do that. I know, I know. Oh, oh, did, 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 you, did you get the memo? <laughs> So is that, is that one of the reasons that you've moved to producing guns with a carbon barrel? We were doing the, the fluted barrel, and these barrels are good. We get the, the metal from Germany, so it's really good metal. And the guy makes a match grade barrel. The thing is, <clears throat> a lot of guys got in this hype thing about carbon, and they shoot the same. And you know, and the thing about the carbon is, you know, I just basically did it because I, I like the look of them too. I think they're kind of cool. You know, it kind of gives an added touch to a gun. And and so we made a couple of them and uh, started putting them on. And they shoot good, and we just started selling them. And then there's a lot of guys that you know will buy. Most of the buy guys will go to the metal barrel because the carbon's a little bit higher. It's about a thousand dollars higher. It's that's all personal preference, that. basically. I mean, they all shoot yeah. good. I've got a, a stock guy. We make our own stocks, and they're built and they're custom. You know, length of pull, and we do left-handed stocks too. Um, some people want cheap pieces, some don't. They're made out of Kevlar, fiberglass, and uh, carbon. The carbon ones that the one you had is a that's a carbon one, and I actually painted that one. But anyway, <laughs> I was an artist way back when. <laughs> I shoot a three hundred Win Mag for the majority of of my hunting, um, but I fell in love. Make fun of me all you want. I fell in love with a six five Creedmoor when I actually made a four hundred eighty yard shot on a mule deer not long ago, and so. This 6.5 PRC that I shot the other day, I was actually thinking this would be a fun gun to make that same type of shot on. Yeah. 
Um, did, how did it shoot for you? It shot fantastic. Uh, it took, it was user error is the only reason because I did one tick too high on a thousand yard buffalo. Right over the top of him. That was really close. Yeah, try it again. And then when I went back and recounted, second shot, I nailed it. Whack. Yep. <laughs> that thing's dialed. So uh -huh. we're, but we're talking, I missed the target by that much, you know, and, and so user error, completely my own fault. And I did three shots and it was lights out, like straight, straight out of the box. Like I literally had not taken it out of the case. Man, I was thrilled. It was fun. I had a guy this year from Michigan, and he took, what is this, 24 years to get his elk tag in Colorado. And so I was on my way down to go meal deer hunting, and he calls me, and he goes, oh, I'll be leaving next week. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, where are we at with this? So called back. We got it done, but he was on his way down, driving down to Grand Junction, and I sent him down a V6 Zeiss on it, and I put the dial on it, and I sighted it in with Chris, and we sent it to him, and... He got it, and he went hunting, and about three days later, he texts me, and he goes, it's supposed to be this big elk he shot at 692 oh, yards. Elk. One shot, he dropped it. He goes, I just can't believe it. I never shot a gun. I never sighted a gun in it. I actually shoot that. And so, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's why the precision has evolved so much the last few years, is that so many people are seeing that we're capable of making ethical shots. Ethically, I personally have said, I won't add an animal shoot farther than 500. But that's because I made that decision right here. You know, that's, for me, that's a personal, but, you know, I won't, I won't disparage somebody else who's learned how to effectively shoot those distances, but I believe that's a deeply personal decision on what your limits are. So that's what's nice about it. The guns will do the job. It's just like you said, we've got to decide us as a hunter what if it's 500 for me and 700 for you, right. good. But the yeah. guns will do the trick. I mean, the guns are going to shoot out as far as you know yeah. you need them to go. I'm a big fan of what the precision shooting is that a lot of people have just gotten better overall with their shooting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Far more people are at the range. And it used to be for a lot of hunters, Throw that plate up on the target at 100 yards, call it good. Yeah. If you now, hit the plate, you're good? Yeah, yeah <laughs> seriously. Yeah, I remember those days. I, I don't see that nearly as often anymore. I'm impressed that, that's, that that mentality has changed because I hope that more people are taking better shots as a result of that. that that's cool to see that a, a brand like Inra gives, gives people the tools to be able to make those better shots, whatever your comfortable distance is. Hear that? So one other point I wanted to hit on, this is a jewel trigger. So this is set for three pounds, I believe is what he told us. I reserve the right to be wrong. We can correct that in the lower third. Um, but this is a light trigger, but it's right off the bat, but you can get it the way you want it. You can adjust this to your particular weight and needs. Um, some guys like a little more resistance. And so personally, I like the light trigger. I'm a big fan of, of being able to just pop into the trigger guard and then squeeze it off real gentle. The more gentle it is to me, the less likely you are to jerk it, the harder it gets. But some guys like a little bit of resistance. There is no slop in this trigger whatsoever. So when you, when you go to squeeze, man, it's, your, it's gonna go. This is one of those things that you will absolutely love having a trigger that it's very easy to maintain as well and you can get the right weight that you want. All right, so let's test out this trigger. Got my phone set up here. You can see it. All right, time for some fire in the hole. That's right at 400. So I have now done a grand total of eight shots through this rifle. You know how many I've missed? One and it was 100% user error. And this is a fun rifle to shoot. I gotta be careful I don't go through this ammo too quick. So one thing that's kind of been cool, I have seen some in-rut rifles in the magazine quite a bit. In fact, I've seen a video, I believe Gary English used a 
in rut rifle on one of his hunts. Have you seen a lot a lot of guys using your rifles strictly for hunting? Are they? Well, most of the guys that call me are either got a hunt that's coming up, or they've been waiting for it, like the guy from Michigan, and and they want something that they can count on. You know, I personally shoot every one of them before they go, so I make sure they're all set up and. We got a lot of people calling, and right now it's about an eight eight month wait. So and we're a small company; we're not big. We're here to help you, and if there's a problem, you know, we'll we'll take care of it. What's the future hold for Inra? What are some things that you're you're kind of hoping and dreaming to be able to do in the next few years? I don't want to get really big. I don't want to get to a point where it's a conglomerate and. We still want to be able to do some hunting and go yeah, and do some we like stuff to hunt. ourselves. Yeah, you know, we like to hunt. You know, I'm going to add on hopefully work with another gunsmith down the road is what I'd like to do. You know, I, I, I'd like to just do so many a year and yeah. then just say, okay, we're done for this year. And I don't know what that number is yet. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I'm just having fun. You know, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's a fun job. There we go. Banging steel at 550. That's how easy this is. And so that's the beauty of this. This is set up, he takes your altitude, all the different variables, and he builds you what you want. Look below, you can see the website to inrutrifles.com. Thanks for coming along and make sure you subscribe to Eastman's YouTube channel. There we go. <laughs> that's crazy. 946, that is pretty stinking cool.